OnePlus recently released their new flagship phones, the OnePlus 8 and OnePlus 8 Pro. On them, you'll find Oxygen OS, one of my favorite Android skins, and I'm gonna do a deep dive with some tips and tricks on Oxygen OS next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by LastPass. LastPass manages every entry point to your business so you can mitigate risk in office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hello and welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell and I've got in my hands here the OnePlus 8 Pro. That's right, a few weeks ago I did a full review of the OnePlus 8 Pro on Hands on Tech, so twit.tv slash hot if you want to check that out. But I thought I'd spend a little time taking a look at Oxygen OS. Oxygen OS is the software layer that you see that runs atop of Android. It's kind of their Android skin uh, with OnePlus. And uh, over the years, it's just continued to get better and better. In fact, I would say it's one of my favorite Android skins right now. It does a really great job of offering features without getting in the way. But you kind of need to know that those features are there to begin with. And that's why I'm here talking to you. So why don't we dive right in and take a look at Oxygen OS running on the OnePlus 8 Pro. So first things first, what I like to do with the OnePlus 8 in particular, um, on the side you have the power button. I like to call it a power button, although it's now serving dual purposes on a lot of phones. The S20 Ultra I showed on an earlier episode of Hands on Android actually reprograms this to launch Bixby. And on the OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro, it launches the assistant of your choice by default. So if we go in to settings... We go to buttons and gestures and press and hold the power button. I have it set for power button right now. That's my default. Uh, but again, this is totally up to you. Uh, I prefer for my power button to actually pull up the power menu when it's when it's pushed. That's just really useful for me. OK, and with that out of the way, that's like one of the first things that I do. All right, so now let's focus on the display. And the display on the OnePlus 8 Pro is pretty unique because it not only has the 1440p high resolution, which a lot of phones have, but it's coupled with a 120 hertz refresh rate. And what makes this so different is that you can see here in the resolution uh, settings, settings, display, advanced resolution, uh, I have it set for QHD+. Plus. I like to run at the maximum display because I like the way things look when they look this good. And then refresh rate. What makes this different is that I can run both the highest resolution display setting as well as the highest refresh rate, 120 hertz simultaneously. Other phones like the S20 Ultra require you to ramp down the display resolution in order to run at 120 hertz. The OnePlus 8 Pro does not care if you do that. And you really notice it when you're kind of you know, scrolling around the app drawer, just as one example, everything just kind of looks like it's gliding on butter. I don't know. Uh, it's kind of hard to put it into words, but the animations are just super smooth and really nice to look at. It's one of those things that once you get used to it, it's really hard to undo. So um, just keep in mind that it does come at the... Um, at the expense of battery performance, you will notice a little battery hit running both of these simultaneously, but I don't really mind. While you're in there, make sure and also take a look at the front cam camera display area. Again, if we go to the app drawer, you will see uh, that right now it's being hidden. Right now I've got a nice rounded curve up there. Here, we'll go to the app drawer again. There is a cutout display there, but you can't see it. It's right above the display. Uh, but we can extend our display up to there if we choose. And I usually like to, to run it in this mode. Go ahead and show the front camera. You can see we get more display, actually usable display. The notifications end up appearing on the top row next to where the camera is. And the trade-off is that you now have a hole punch up there. Are you okay with that? Are you not? Either way, you have the settings there to make those changes uh, on your own. All right. Now, speaking of display, if I go ahead and turn off my phone here and double tap, got this nice ambient mode. And you've got some settings uh, here to dictate when that ambient mode appears. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in. We'll go into our settings, display, and down here is ambient display. 
these settings out of the box, some of these are unchecked. Pick up your phone to show, tap the screen to show. Uh, those are unchecked. So I like to activate those so that, as you saw just a few seconds ago, I literally just tapped the screen once and that ambient display appeared. Another thing to check out here is the horizon light. This is kind of cool. It's basically a little effect that happens. You can see it modeled here on the sides of the phone when the display is off and a notification appears. So it's kind of a replacement for a notification light and it looks really cool in practice. Um, you can have that running in a couple of different colors. Uh, if you so choose, it's up to you. I like to keep it on because, uh, I don't know, it's kind of neat looking. I don't mind it. All right, up next, we're going to take a look at apps and content within Oxygen OS because OnePlus has done a really good job of giving you some very meaningful features on how certain apps on your phone are found, how they're protected, maybe they're hidden from view, that sort of stuff. And we're going to start with a feature called App Locker. If I go into Settings, down at Utilities, I'll find a little Settings pane for App Locker. And what this actually does, and I'll tap it here, it'll ask me for my PIN. While I unlock it, I'll let you know. What it actually does is it locks any app on your phone and protects it with a pin, a fingerprint, or a pattern you can choose. And it gives you some control over what happens with notifications. As you can see right up there, hide notification content, thinking being if you're hiding an app from, from the phone, uh, you probably wanna hide the content that's associated with those notifications. Probably a good idea to have that on. So if we go in here and add an app, We'll go ahead and scroll down and there's Chrome. I can go ahead and hide that. Now, normally I could launch Chrome, but because now that it's protected, it gives me this pin entry or I can use my fingerprint and jump right in and it takes me right into Chrome. So that keeps people from launching a certain app. Maybe it's a social media app and you don't want someone to post on your social media account. Use your imagination. There are probably a number of reasons why you might want to do this. Uh, very easy to do within the settings. Very easy to undo as well. I'm going to go ahead and take that off because I don't really want to protect my Chrome. Uh, but there you go. Now you know about it. Another interesting feature that OnePlus has added is something called Hidden Space. This one's actually really easy to get to. You swipe up into your app drawer and then swipe to the right. You are taken to this place this place called Hidden Space. And you use this for apps that you want to keep out of the app drawer. And maybe you also want to password protect this whole area. So think of it, it's kind of like an app locker, but here's a bunch of apps that you want to keep hidden from view. It'll actually remove them from this view. So if I go here, find Chrome, do that, bang. Um, it's over in my Hidden Space. Now when I go... Over here, there it is. Out in my normal uh, area, in my normal app drawer, I can't find Chrome here anywhere, um, but it is over here. And I could actually enable the password on this whole area as well. And that would mean that in order to access the hidden space, I'd have to authenticate with my fingerprint in this case. I can tap and hold, and I can unhide Chrome, and boom, it's back over here in my app drawer. So that's just another way to kind of hide an app or have an app off in the distance uh, out of view. Another feature here is a feature called Parallel Apps. If we go into Settings and then Tools and Utilities, well, just down to Utilities and Parallel Apps, there we go. These are the apps that are installed on the phone at this point that support Parallel Apps. And essentially what Parallel Apps is, is it allows for multiple accounts with a single app if the app itself doesn't necessarily support it, or, you know, which would, might be the case with like Snapchat or WhatsApp, that sort of thing. Or it's also very good if you happen to use an app for work and then also for personal. So if you're set up entirely in Twitter like I am, and you go ahead and activate this again, and now with it set, I can go into my app drawer and I'm going to actually find another version of Twitter. So I've got my original one that I'm already logged into. And then I've got a parallel version of it that I can log into and have that be, say, my work account so that I can have two separate icons to launch into them, two separate Twitter sandboxes, if you will. That could come in really handy. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by LastPass. Your remote workforce is a vital part of your business, but it can also be a security risk. 
Easily transition from in-office to in-home with LastPass. It enables IT to remain in complete control over which employees are accessing which resources. Employees can securely share passwords across teams, and it reduces the risk of phishing schemes by never auto-filling passwords on suspicious websites. Get simple security across every access point with LastPass at lastpass.com slash twit. That's lastpass.com slash twit. Next up, you might be a fan of dark mode, but you might have an app like, for instance, Hangouts. If I jump into Hangouts, uh, this is a pretty blinding app. It's also a very old and unsupported app in many ways, but it's still there. You might want dark mode on that app. Uh, well, you can force it with OnePlus. Now, in order to do this, you first need to go into customization in the settings, go to tone and set it to dark tone. All right, that's gonna turn everything a little bit darker. Suddenly the app tray is dark. That activates dark mode. Now, if we go into settings and utilities, there we go. And into OnePlus Laboratory. This is an area of some uh, kind of uh, testing features, features that aren't fully and completely baked, but that you can play with. You can see down here, enable dark tone in more apps. So when I jump into there and it's active, because I am in dark tone, these are the apps on the phone that right now it supports Hangouts, Messages, Reddit, and WhatsApp. And I've now, you know, I have Hangouts activated with the dark tone. If I jump into Hangouts now to show you what you saw just a few seconds ago, now suddenly it's dark mode, it's supported, it's forcing it. You might run into issues though where apps just look a little wonky because it's not coded by the developers themselves of the apps. So keep that in mind. Uh, you might have some weird behavior uh, as you do so. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in dark mode for now. Now let's move on to some of the fingerprint stuff. So as you saw, there was a fingerprint in the display and you can mess around with that a little bit. If we go into settings and we go security and lock screen, and fingerprint unlock. Go ahead and enter my pin in order to get in. And here we are. Now, one of the things I wanted to show off is the animations. It's kind of goofy, but there are some animations that you can uh, set here. You know, in the past, it's just been a plain kind of ugly, stark green fingerprint uh, on the front but you can add some animations around it to kind of distract you. When you're pushing down your finger, you get the animation and it does the kind of, uh, does the splashy effect. And I don't know, you might find one that looks a little better than just that stark fingerprint sensor uh, that appears there. So I kind of like to change that up. Uh, it gives you something to tweak anyways. And then there's also a feature called quick launch. If we go settings, utilities, and quick launch right at, right there up at the top. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. What this actually does is when I hold down my fingerprint in order to unlock the phone, if I keep that held down, it's gonna pull up some shortcuts for me. So I'll go ahead and turn off the phone, double tap, press and hold, and boom. Now I have some shortcuts, which I can actually navigate left and right in order to jump right into them. It might just eliminate a step. Uh, I could do voice search, testing, testing, testing. testing, testing, testing. All right, all right, you can go away now. Um, so that's kind of a cool way to do a quick launch when you're already using your fingerprint sensor. All right, next let's move on to battery. And the first thing that I wanna point out with battery is something called optimized charging, which is a relatively new feature. We'll go into settings, go into battery, and optimized charging. And what this does, it actually analyzes your nightly charging habits. So it kind of keeps a running tab on how and when you put your phone on your charger, when you pick it up in the morning. And it only allows the battery to charge to 80% and then to 100% right before you normally wake up. And the thinking here is that it actually saves the long-term battery health uh, of your device or within your device. So uh, it could give you a little bit of extra uh, longevity to your device over time. So that's a pretty cool feature. Another cool feature involves another phone. So I'm gonna bring in my Pixel 4 XL right here. And I'm gonna show off a little wireless charging, but in the reverse direction. If I go into 
my settings on the OnePlus 8 Pro, battery and reverse charge pulls up this menu. Now this, this will only, when I activate it, it will only stay on for a short period of time and then it turns off uh, in, within a minute. It does this to save the battery. It's not constantly looking to charge, sending out energy, that sort of stuff. Uh, once I activate it, I can actually place my Pixel 4 on top of it and do a reverse charge of my Pixel 4 XL with this phone. So we're gonna go ahead and activate that. Go ahead and turn this on around, place the Pixel 4 XL on top, and boop, I'm now getting charged. It's a pretty slow charge, but it's a charge nonetheless, and if you happen to have wireless earphones that wirelessly charge, uh, maybe the case does, uh, you could use this on that as well. And a little pro tip, I'll go ahead and show you real quick. If you go into uh, your quick settings tiles, you can actually, and I don't think it's there initially, you have to hit the edit to find it, but you can find the reverse charge button here so you don't have to go into settings to find it. You can just tap it right there and I'll turn it off when I'm all done. I was talking about quick settings just a few seconds ago, a few more that I like that you should definitely know about. And some of these you just have to add. Again, you hit that pencil button to add a quick setting into uh, the experience here. The first one is screen recorder. Now this is a feature that's coming to Android 11 uh, out of the box. They're working on it vigorously for the next major version of Android, uh, but it is in the OnePlus 8 Pro. If I tap it and I give it permission, I get this little overlay that allows me to jump right in and record. And I am recording a screen recording here. Everything that I do uh, is being recorded. I should also note that uh, there are settings in here as well that allow you to do some pretty interesting things. The main one I wanna point out is recording internal audio, which doesn't work on most phones unless you're rooted, but for whatever reason, on the OnePlus 8 Pro, they allow you to record that internal audio. Use your imagination why uh, certain developers might not want you to do that, but here it's possible. You can also merge voice, uh, the uh, microphone audio uh, as well into the recording, that's up to you. but. Uh, the fact that it records internal audio is actually very interesting uh, that it does that automatically. So that's a good feature to have access to. And finally, what I wanna show you in quick settings is a mode called reading mode. Now it wasn't here initially. I had to tap the pencil and drag it up, uh, which you can do with a number of different quick settings. I've already done that. So there it is. What is reading mode? So I'm gonna tap and hold it just to take me through to the settings. Essentially what it does is it turns your display into a monochromatic grayscale display. So it removes all the color. It also happens in the process to remove any of the blue uh, hues. And that's actually good for not disrupting your circadian rhythms so that you can get a good night's sleep. So if you happen to be reading a lot of content on your device in bed right before you go to sleep, this is a good mode to have running. When you turn it on, which I will do right now, I'll go into mono effect, you can kind of see everything's gonna shift down to grayscale. Very nice. If I end up pulling up, let's see here, Play Books, for example. This is the manual for KitKat 4.4. Happen to have it in my Play Books <laughs> library. But you can see everything's in black and white. It kind of increases the contrast. Like I said, removes the blue hue, so you're not gonna mess with your sleep. And allow just it's a mode meant to allow you to focus on what you happen to be reading. And even further than that, we go back into the settings, you can assign reading mode to a particular app. So let's say you had the Kindle app in here, you could assign it to the Kindle app. That way, anytime you're using the Kindle app to read a book on your phone, reading mode will automatically launch into it. It'll grayscale, you'll get the benefits of that. And then when you're done in the Kindle app and you go to your home screen, color rushes back. And in fact, I can make that happen right now by tapping it You go back here and you see color reemerging. My phone is normal again. So you see there's a whole lot of software hiding underneath the hood on the OnePlus 8 Pro here. Oxygen OS really speaks for itself, and that's what I think I really appreciate about what OnePlus is doing with their phones, especially their software. A lot of useful features, but they let users kind of discover them instead of hitting them over the head saying, oh, by the way, did you know it does this? Did you know it does that? That approach really gets old for me. I really like what OnePlus is doing with their phones. Send me your emails to handsonandroid at twit.tv. I'm happy to answer your questions there. You can also go to twit.tv slash 
slash HOA to subscribe to this show in audio video formats, as well as link over to YouTube to find the show there. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you for watching Hands on Android. We'll see you next time.